have to give them that need it. Well, there's a lot of ways of stealing. You know, people don't think about things that they should think about. Wasting is the same as stealing. I've seen people to go into a restaurant or to go into a, one of these buffets oh. and they go to a buffet and they'll they'll eat some of them will actually some characters I know try to stick cookies in plastic bags and put them in their pockets and take what okay. but when you go there and you fill up a plate you go and you've eaten and you, and you leave that plate sitting there you waste that food you've just stolen from the other people because see that restaurants they're for a profit right and the people that come in behind you they're going to have to pay for that Amen. or when you go out to a place and, and and you know they have you know the the little boxes of ketchup or relish or whatever right. and, and i've seen people grab have a bag and reach in and grab handfuls and take all these or napkins and take these things home with them really grabbing all all you're doing is making making the other people come in and pay more and you the next time you come in you're going to have to pay more yep. see stealing's stealing's always wrong amen amen it's always wrong right. okay now verse 30 and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption you know this is something we need how do you grieve the holy spirit rebellion and sin mm -hmm. you you grieve the holy spirit with rebellion and sin And, and you know what happens when you do that? He tells you in Hebrews chapter 12 that God will chastise his people. You wonder why things seem to be going wrong all the time for you? Nothing seems to be going right. What is it, God? Why, why are you punishing me, God? Well, have you read your Bible? Have you, have you understood what, that you're not being obedient? That God demands obedience? Okay. Do you understand that you're you're not placing me first in your life, but you're placing everything before me? And you want to know why things are going good for you? Read Hebrews chapter 12. He tells you, he tells you that he will chastise you even to the point of scourging. Now he's making a very, very serious proclamation there that is that if people are really saved if you're really saved if you really are truly saved and you're a child of God and you're living in a manner which brings dishonor to God it will cost you okay you see God says he will chastise you even to the point of scourging now very few people really survive scourging what you had you had a stick 14 inches long it was wrapped around with three big leather straps. And at the end of each of those three leather straps, there was three smaller straps. And on those, they had bones and stone and pieces of metal. And they would use those, and they set up, the Jews could only use 39 straps. 39s, because most guys didn't survive past that, you see. The Romans could do as many as they wanted, and many died, okay? But the point was that he's telling his people, God is saying, I am not going to allow you, my children, to dishonor me anymore amongst men, from number one, for God's sake, mm -hmm. and number two, for your own sake. Amen. You see, God is not to be dishonored, number two. The more you do that, the more you take away whatever treasures you have in heaven. Right. Now you have to understand something again too. We have, we have but one short life to live to place up those crowns in heaven. One short life. Mm -hmm. I guarantee that there's not one person in this room that has too many crowns in heaven. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's not one that has enough crowns in heaven. That's true. Mm -hmm. And there's not one person here that can afford to lose any crowns in heaven. So what does that mean? Well, that means the first thing you do in the morning when you get up is you pray and you ask God for direction to lead you, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, go to Hebrews chapter 13 and read verse 7 and 17. It says, to listen to those that are in authority over you, pay a close attention to what they're telling you because they're doing it 
They're the watchers of your souls. Listen to them. You say, when your preachers, when your pastors tell you this, and you, you brush them off, you're brushing off the Lord and God doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. What was he telling you? <clears throat> He's telling you, number one, if you are saved, you cannot lose your salvation. Amen. You're sealed until the day of redemption. You belong to God. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit by acting, by being in the world. Because you see, when you grieve the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will grieve you back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There are things, you have problems and troubles in your life that you wouldn't have if, you'd been, if you had just been obedient to the Lord. But sometimes God gives us these troubles. He gives us little hills that get us ready for mountains. And sometimes, if you're doing the Lord's work too, if you're doing God's work, you can't expect things to be hunky-dory all the time. Whenever you're doing the Lord's work, you're going to attract the devil. Oh, yes. But folks say in those cases when you do that, and in those cases when the devil comes after you for doing good works, well, then you get the credit and glory. Right? Amen. And that's what you want. You don't want to lose it down here. Turn in your Bibles over to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, starting with verse 13. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. There are many there be which go in thereat, because the straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there that be that find it. He's making a very clear point that many come, but few are chosen. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Let me just tell you, uh, John had made a mention to me of, about this, this guy that was on Sid Roth. And uh, this fellow, he was a black preacher from Africa. Oh, his first name is Francis something. I, I right. can't remember the last name. Well, anyhow, I, just by chance, I, I was able to catch it at about 3 o'clock this morning, in fact. And this guy was saying how he had this dream about Barack Obama. And he saw Barack coming to him. And the first time when Barack was walking, he was, he was drunk. He was walking like a drunk man. And then after that, he became sober and bright. And, the point that he was making is that the first, the first four years of Barack would be as a man of sin, but then after that, he was going to become godlike. Well, folks, yeah, I remember a few years back. I remember when Bill Clinton just got elected. There were two preachers from Georgia, and these two preachers from Georgia were going all over the country, and I was in a church holding the Right to Life meeting in the fellowship hall of that church. At the same time, these two men had come, and they were in the sanctuary telling people they, they needed to listen to Bill Clinton because God had raised him up as a great spiritual leader. Well, a number of the people walked out of the sanctuary, came and they joined us in the fellowship. They, they wanted no part of that. Those were people that had discernment, that could understand, you see. And for these guys to say, let me, let me tell you what the Word of God says. It's here. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Amen. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Amen? Amen. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. 
Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Well, that's standard practice for the prosperity preachers out there today. Right. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Turn over to Acts chapter 20 in your Bibles. Then Acts chapter 20. Starting in verse 28. <clears throat> Take heed therefore unto yourselves and unto all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God and which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, sparing, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn every one, night and day, with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, you yourselves know that with these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. <coughs> and they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, souring most of all the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accomplished <coughs> him, and they accompanied him to the ship. You see, Paul had made a point earlier <coughs> over in Ephesians that he and the apostles, they had the authority to demand that as they did their ministry and preaching, that people support them in their ministry. Amen. But what they did is they, on top of that, even though they did all of that work, they didn't take any pay for that. They could. They, were, they had all the authority to do that. But instead, they, they wanted to show an example how men should work and support themselves. Amen. Shouldn't depend upon others. Right. Turn to Luke chapter 14. And in Luke chapter 14, I want you to know you can judge the character of a people by the way they treat the least among them, the unborn babies, the prison inmates. But in Luke chapter 14, I want to start in verse. 11. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Then said he also unto them that be him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brother, nor thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they all also bid thee again. And a recompense be made unto thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed. Now, here, this is the only time in all of the New Testament these words are used. And that is the resurrection of the just. And he simply means this, folks. Look. Again, you judge the character of a people, not by how they treat those that are fully able to repay them, you know, like our society does today. But I'll tell you what, when you guys go out there and you stand in the streets in front of those bloody abortion mills, and you intercede on behalf of those babies that can never, can never do anything for you, that can't pay you back, that's when you're doing it for the Lord. That's when you're doing the Lord's work. Amen? Yeah, that's right. When you go down to those prisons and you, you minister to those inmates that are on death row, never going to get out of prison. They can't help you in any way. That's when you're doing the Lord's work. 
when you're going out there and you have people out there that are poor, you know, I, I know sometimes it can be an aggravation. And you'll you run across these guys on the streets and they'll come up. We have a fellow that comes every, about uh, every week he'll come out there, Anthony. Anthony's a, right Doug, Anthony's a big fellow. He'll come down and he, he want to borrow $10. See, yeah. what the borrowing means give, me, give, give it to me. Give me $10. Well, I'll help Anthony because, see, Anthony needs, you know, he's, he's living on very little. But I make Anthony stand out there and, and, and uh, well, he, he don't mind standing out there and standing there. And while he's standing there, guess what Anthony gets from me? He gets the gospel. That's and right. he's learning a little bit. But you'll often come across these people on the street and sometimes people will say, what a disgusting person, a beggar, okay? It's unclean. You know what? I tell you what, unless you can see into that person's heart and you know their real story, better help them out if you can. Mm -hmm. Amen. I remember some years ago a fella, he was a big, husky, strong guy. And there was this other fellow who worked, who worked every day, but he worked every day in the coal mines. He worked with coal, and he had coal in his skin. Mm -hmm. And But he would, instead of going home and taking a, a shower or a bath, he would walk on down the street and he'd go in and he'd to this bar. Well, this other fella got so tired to see, he didn't like looking at him. He didn't want to look at him. And so one day he just went out there and uh, beat him half to death because he didn't like to look at this guy. You see, folks, we can't look upon the hearts of people. And we got to stop and think before we make judgments. And when, when you run across someone out there that needs a hand, give them a hand. Amen? If they need a hand, give them a hand. Amen. And if they're out there and if they're, let me tell you what, if they're lying and stealing, unless you know that, that's on them. God will judge them for it for sure. They'll never, you never, you never get away with anything with God. You just don't get over on God anytime. Amen? Amen. So, the only person, there's only one person that all of you can control, and that's yourselves. Only yourself can you control, and only yourself will you have to answer for before Almighty God. That's right. Amen. 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 And with that, we've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church. You've been listening to us on Liberty Works Radio Network. That's the Eagle 104.3 in Tampa, Ocala. And until next week, we want to say good morning. God bless and remember always, 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 let's do it. Keep fighting the fight! <coughs>